Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now. The button below. Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salati wa salam ashrafi mursaleen Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammad al-Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bimadadakum wa nazarakum Sayyidiya Rasul Kareem Ya Habib al InshaAllah for Thursdays we try our best to be interactive and to deal with people's interests and concerns and always a reminder for myself that this way is a khususan, it's a very specific and special way towards Allah We've given examples before for people who try to understand that when Allah in Surah Al-Kahf describes what Nabi Musa from official channels and very official, very eye for eye understanding wanted from a haqqaiq. And Nabi Musa represents that sort of officiality that everything has to be precise, all the T's have to be crossed and all the dots upon the eye. Wanted from a reality Allah directed Nabi Musa to one whom attained a rahmah. And then we taught him il maladuni. Means that that servant attained a rahmah and a mercy, attained the presence with rahmatan lil alameen, attained a nearness and proximity to that rahmah of Allah which is the heart of the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad with that rahmah and that mercy then throughout Holy Qur'an Allah describes, Ittaqullah wa alimukumullah. There are a category of servants in whom Allah destined for them a tarbiyah and follow these teachers who will teach you taqwa, who will teach you a consciousness, a deep consciousness of Allah in which to truly Feel the Divinely Presence within all their senses and as a result Allah will teach that servant. Means by means of Allah inspiring, by means of inspiring Sayyidina Muhammad from Atiullah, inspirations will come from Allah's Divinely command through a flowing channel to Atiya Rasul Sayyidina Muhammad signs off on the command from Allah that the heart, Muhammadan heart opens for that servant. That Muhammadan heart begins to emanate with every secret and reality. What salamun hiya hatta mitna al fajr, malaikati wa ruh means that every being and ulul amr that are stationed in the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad begin to emanate these knowledges into that servant's heart, each to their darajat and their proximity. So the Muhammadan heart begins to dress that servant and that's what Allah is describing, attain the rahmah, means that they they receive their salamun hiya hatta mitla al fajr, salamun qawla mir rabbir raheem. And we describe many times on this salam, this sir and this reality that coming through this lamb, this, this tongue of realities through the Muhammadan haqqaiq. And every Muhammadan representative, their lights shining upon that soul to make them to be Muhammadiyoon overabundant flowing oceans of Muhammadan haqqaiqs. These are different than somebody who is taught in an official channel that they went to a madrasa, they got thoroughly beaten, then they memorized, then they recite this, recite that for them, that's different. That's a different way when Allah want to train that student. And this is a different way. 
When Allah wound the student in these times of difficulty is accompany these guides. They dress you, bless you and uplift you. They train you with that tarbiyah and through that uplifting they be brought into that presence and dressed from that presence. Their knowledge is not the knowledge in which to give the quotes of fiqr, which hadith precisely, what are the footnotes of that hadith. That's a zahiri external knowledge. This is an internal reality where they can teach you given permission by Sayyidina Muhammad the reality of the hadith. So when people don't know how to operate and deal with them, they say, well we'll ask you questions and you answer them and we want to know, is a bird allowed in a cage? That's not the way to deal with these servants. They don't give you the yes and no, they want to give you the wisdom of why yes or no. And those whom Allah gave ilm al wa hikmati bi salihin were given the greatest gift that Allah has to give. So if anyone thinks they got a gift from Allah then the greatest gift that Allah is in Holy Qur'an is those whom we given this type of knowledge and the hikmah and wisdom in which to use it, they have been given the greatest Divine gift and they inherit from Lisan as Siddiq al Aliyah, the most high and truthful tongue because truthfulness is through character. Others if they don't achieve through their training, through all of their practices, real taqwa. If you're not Ahlul Basira and your heart is not open, do you really think you have a taqwa? How can you fear that which you don't see? You don't really fear it because you don't see it, you don't feel it, you don't definitely taste it. So it's imitated fear and that's why they can do anything because they already feel they're behind 25 feet of steel. Real taqwa is when Allah opens for the servant that they see with their heart. And when they see everything they feel becomes a thousand times more real. You can feel an energy in a room but from these servants again to their darajats, uh, what, what shaykh has been lifted in what presence? They see, if you see and you feel, you're taking now from the oceans of haqqaiq because you, you hear it with the sense, you're seeing it with the sense, you, you're feeling it and tasting it, it's a real and a reality for you. These are different types of servants and Allah has many categories in Holy Qur'an. Who are the people of the bab? Because these people come back and say, no, no we're all the same, there's, no, there's nothing hidden. Mm, that's unfortunate that you would think like that. Because if it didn't open for you, you feel that it's open for no one. But there are category of ulama qayyim al bilqist, who are the people, these learned people, who are the people of the bab? Who are the Ahlul Tafakkur, the people that none know except those whom contemplate? Throughout Allah is hinting to us, no, no there are categories, these are rijal, they are the ibadullah, all of these categories what reality Allah has dressed within them and blessed within them. So there are differences how to deal with the categories and the people of wisdom is to seek the wisdom and the reality of what they teach. You don't ask them that, how do you perform hajj? Google it. But ask them, what's the secret of seven tawaf? You don't ask them, how to make wudu? 
Anybody can Google it based on your madhab. But ask them the secret of wudu and the haqqaiq of that wudu that dresses the soul eternity eternally. And even their haqqaiq we've said before can go from the level of ilm al-shariya, ilm al-tariqah, ilm al-marifah, ilm al-haqiqah, ilm al-azimah. That each of its haqqaiqs can go deeper and deeper and deeper into that reality. We pray that Allah give us an understanding on how to sit at that well how to drink from the reality of that wisdom and it requires an adab. And that's why we say internet adab is one thing when people click and like everything. The, that's okay but by giving people access to the shaykh, by emailing and communicating they're drawing you close. No matter how high you think your maqam and who you think speaks to you by inspiration. What Allah gave to the example of Sayyidina Yusuf says, even if your father is a prophet Allah wants to throw you into the well. It doesn't care of your lineage, doesn't care if your father is an active prophet of Allah When he wants the servant to achieve a reality, he distances the servant and will send somebody to teach that servant. And that teaching will be first on basing, putting the person into a well and bring them down. Through that system of crashing we read Surat Al-Yusuf where Allah just says it's most beautiful qissa, most beautiful story. So that to bring the servant down Disattach from everything they think they are, whatever they think they achieved or received, they have to be reformatted. That reformatting and then be rebooted to bring back to the correct understanding and towards that relationship. And then the story of Sayyidina Yusuf until he waited, then the one whom is for him appeared. Somebody asks, how do you know who your shaykh is? And it's an important example. If we're going to build a choo-choo train, if we want to build a train because Allah is the most beautific of fashioners and the best of designers. If you want to build a train from here to New York, do you build the train first or you put the track? You think that Allah made a train first and then as we go we'll decide we'll put tracks out? Nobody would build in dunya like that, why would Allah do that? The track has already been built and that's why Allah describes everything is in an orbit. Nothing is random, nothing is being determined by your cleverness. Uh -huh. Nothing being determined by your thought. Negate yourself, stop intervening and just taslim and submit. Allah has laid the tracks everywhere of where the salik is going to travel and then creates the train. So before you've been brought onto this earth, your destiny has been written. The tracks have been laid and exactly where you're supposed to go, will go. If when inspired you listen to goodness, train towards goodness, your train is moving closer and faster to the destination that Allah has given. And along this magnificent path there are many diversions but in the end they all end up back. When Allah has destined for you to reach your reality, you are destined for example to reach New York and you're in Los Angeles 
you can never deviate from Allah's plan. It's written, you will get to New York. Are you going to go on the fastest most powerful track where based on your training and your inspiration you're going? You're taking all the right switches because Choo Choo Train has a switch. Or if your intentions are wrong, you're contaminated by alcohol, liquor, drugs, bad things, bad sounds, bad people, then what happens? You keep taking the wrong track, you turn left, you made another left in life, you made another left in life, your train is now going through the mountains where everything begin to hit you, begin to collapse upon you, in many cases even take you off the track and many people had difficulties in life that crushed them until they got the choo-choo train back. And then they were inspired, I shouldn't have had a made a left there and I begin to make right and the right decisions. And that's what we talked about before but it's important for the analogy because people get worried, how am I going to do, how am I going to do this, how am I going to do that, is everything going to be okay, is my family going to be okay, my choice going to be okay, my money going to be okay. It's been written, don't think that your cleverness got you this far. Not a series of wise choices but your cleverness is what got you into every trouble. When you thought you would be so clever and you would put your two cents into it and then you chose wrong. Says that if the cleverness is coming from your head, shaitan is already up there as a shariq. So those whom ponder and think Every decision is mixed with shaitan, the nafs, all the dunya desires and ego. So what they taught them is the first zikr of every tariqah was, La ilaha illallah, la to your head, ilaha unto your right, illallah nothing but Allah into the heart. So that they live their life by their heart and not anybody else's head. Everybody's head say, why you do like this, you're crazy people like this, why you do like that, why you like this, why you not like this, why you have to look like this, why you be like this. These are all so that my inspirations come. You keep saying to make a left in life, I'm going right. And everybody else on the wrong path, of course they want you to make all the wrong decisions. Come with us, left. But no, we want to be from the people of the right hand and make the right decisions. So then this is written for us. Our life is a series of choices. Through our ability and through our training it'd be written. So who your guide is, is whom your choo-choo train has led you to. The path was already written to that guide and your train appeared. Along the way there are people who try to hijack your train, come into an area where they don't need to be, get involved, misdirect, misguide and deviate the person from the direction they're supposed to be going. But the path has been laid. When Allah thought of making you as a choo-choo train, He said, your tracks go to Him. And when you listen to him, he teaches you how to be inspired. And all these tracks are going into the Muhammadan heart. So means then not to worry, don't think too much through your head, it's already been written for us. We pray that Allah give us good character in which to tolerate the understanding. And don't use your head with their head. Don't compare what you think to what they think. You are supposed to come in as a binary code, all this teaching and then people I'm surprised they don't get it. That this is the month of binary code, you have to learn how to shut off. Don't compare your thoughts with their thought, don't compare the coordinates with their coordinates. Because you are in a training in which to shut off your coordinates 
and to understand the coordinates coming to you. This process of shutting off is the process of dying before you die. To take your signal and shut it so that you can begin to understand the coordinates and the signal coming and the training of inspiration coming into the heart inshaAllah. We pray that Allah dress us and bless us from the holy month of Shawwal then that holy reality of what has been written for us so that to build our faith that we have faith Ya Rabbi it's already been written. We're just appearing to make a series of choices. We pray that the choices are most correct so that that path be a blessed path and least amount of difficulty. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.